seeing a move of customers moving from consuming software on-premise to consuming as a service for a while. And uh, we have done work uh, in the past to enable our software to be provided as a service. That's why we have a pretty healthy business today through hosters. What we've, we've learned, especially over the last year, is that movement has drastically accelerated. So that was the data I provided in the talk today, showing that uh, uh, SMB's uh, view, uh, view of critical IT and it being hosted IT has gone up in double digits, right? And so that's a great opportunity for all of us. For Microsoft, uh, what we're doing, that means that every one of our products now have a cloud component, right? So Exchange becoming multi, natively multi-tenant as opposed to before where you were taking, taking enterprise software and making adapting it for a hosted multi-tenant environment. SharePoint is native multi-tenant. Uh, Office Communication Server will go uh, will become multi-tenant, and and so on and so forth. So that that gives hosters the ability to create offers faster, uh, without having to make up for the fact that the product wasn't designed for uh, a hosted scenario. On the infrastructure side, it's the same thing, right? So we we have our Windows and Hyper V technology that an out and system center that enables you to create virtualized environments. It, we're doing a lot of work to think through how you support uh, uh, cloud infrastructures and you support applications across infrastructures. So you'll hear us starting to talk about data federation, secure identity federation. So these are all uh, cloud oriented functionality that wasn't as critical before. And then the third component I would add is that in some cases it actually will make more sense to resell a service from a scale provider than to build it out yourself. And so that's what we're doing with MS Online as an example, where a hoster now can take a service and instead of having to invest in infrastructure, worrying about keeping it up to date, they can take a service that's running at scale, so very cost effective, add it to their portfolio of offerings and really go to the customer with a complete uh, set of offerings as opposed to a very uh, targeted or isolated offering, which is not what customers want today. Uh, absolutely. So Exchange today has no provisioning APIs that would enable you to easily add customers uh, on a server uh, uh, through those APIs, isolate them from other businesses on that same server. All that's being built into Exchange, and so that way you don't, or the hoster or the control panel vendor does not have to write code on top of it to create those, the, that kind of functionality. So that, that's an example of it. So uh, that, that's part of it. Another part is about being able to federate across multiple environments. So today, it's, we have Active Directory, which is a good first step in enabling federation, but you could see long term where you have an application that's distributed over geographies, across data centers, so the application never goes down, and the underlying infrastructure can get updated, changed, and the customer would never know. And so we need to make that functionality be native in our products so hosts just can worry about becoming a trusted advisor to their customer as opposed to patching software or uh, building out that infrastructure, which is very complex. It, the, there's, a, there's a balance between the two, right? We want to enable flexibility to meet the demands of, uh, the varied demands of customers across the world. Right. We also want to make it easy for the hoster to go to market because the market's changing very quickly. And if they spend too much time on technology and not enough time on uh, acquiring that customer and meeting their needs, they won't right. be successful. So it's a, it's a bit of both. Don't be viewed as a web hoster, right? That's way too narrow. 
the customer has gotten more complex in their needs. Right. They want someone who can help them be successful and use cloud services uh, in their business. They're maturing. Most of them are there, and uh, that they could they could provide services today by just partnering with other right. hosters, and they've done it before, right? All the resellers GoDaddy has, for example, right. right? Those are guys that are looking like hosters, but right. really aren't, right? right? They're only providing that that front end that enables them to be that trusted advisor. It's that same model, but now instead of acquiring everything from that one hoster, they might be aggregating services from multiple service providers. Uh, so I won't. I'll give some guidance. Right. If I was a small provider, I would send them to uh, an enabling partner like Parallels, okay. right? Or Ensim or, or that, um, uh, .NET Panel or EMX Cortex, right. because they have models uh, like Parallels, I know, has a pay-as-you-go model, right? They don't make any money if you don't make any money. Right, yes. uh, I would go to them, so that way they can get you set up and going very quickly, and uh, it would be an opportunity for them to grow pretty fast. There are some differences between the U.S. and Europe, and, and definitely Asia, but the demand is there, and the hosters that are actually being the most successful are the ones who are going after the, the slightly larger companies, 50 users, 100 users, where they have more complex IT needs, they understand the value of IT, uh, but they're doing exactly what I'm, I'm proposing, right, or what I'm, gui I'm guiding. So all I'm doing is taking what successful hosters are doing right. and then and packaging that up and then telling everybody about it. It's not. Microsoft, the Oracle on the right. Hill, right, that says you should do this. Right. It's, it's uh, John finding out who's being successful and then telling everybody the secret sauce.